If you've ever created a machine learning model, then I'm pretty sure you've used scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is the most popular ML library for tabular data. It has a 48% amazing year-on-year -year growth and it's used for different tasks like classification, regression, clustering, etc. During GTC 2025, NVIDIA unveiled a new enhancement to the QML library. The QML library now supports zero code changes for accelerating scikit-learn, thus enabling faster AI processing without requiring any modifications to the existing code base. This enhancement is particularly beneficial for data scientists looking to leverage GPU acceleration seamlessly into their workflows. Here are the speedups that you can expect from your current CPU scikit-learn workflows to a QML based GPU enabled workflows on scikit-learn without any change of code. Linear regression, dimensionality reduction can kind of give you 50x boost in terms of speed up as compared to the CPU versions. NVIDIA's QML update not only accelerates sklearn model pipeline but also accelerates HDB scan and UMAP algorithms. Isn't this amazing? To continue the amazement, let me switch over to the coding section and show you this amazing power of QML. So I'm basically using Google Colab for this entire demo and I'm using a T4 GPU that is easily available on a Google Colab GPU session. So I'll show you the QML's accelerator mode which is QML.axel. Now how do you start off? Well you have to start off by verifying your setup. So the first command that you have to run is nvidia-smi. If this gives you a response where you have a Tesla T4 allocated to you or if you're using your own GPU, then you should be able to see a GPU for this particular command. Now what I want to carry out are set of experiments to show you the speed up and how you can reach at really accurate models very quickly. Okay. So here is where I'll start off with the import section. So now let me run this particular cell. I have a good enough data set hosted on this particular URL. The good part about pandas is that I can kind of import the entire data set directly from the URL. So firstly what I'll do is I'll create a variable called as URL and pass in the input data set URL. Next up I'll define the columns. So these exact column names exist in the URL itself. So I'm just pasting it from there. What I'll do next is I'll read the data from the URL into this data frame called as data. I have the data with me and this is the overall shape of my data frame. So it has close to 5,81,000 rows and 55 columns. So it's a sizable data set as you can see many columns, many rows. Now the first thing that we'll do is we'll kind of split the data into X train, X test, Y train and Y test. So here is where the splitting happens. So I'll pass in X and Y and for training, I'll be using 80% of the data set for testing. I'll be using 20% of my data set. So I'll quickly run this. Next up, I define my classifier, which is CLF here. I'm using a random forest classifier with N estimators equal to hundred max depth equal to five. So individual trees can go at max to depth of five. Then there are max features equal to one n jobs equal to minus one signifies that the classifier can basically use all the CPU cores that are available for fitting the trees. Okay. I'm basically also timing this entire execution right from creating the classifier to fitting the data in the classifier. Okay. So let me quickly run the cell. So it took around 2 minutes and 11 seconds to fit our entire training data to the classifier. So we have our trained model. Now let's validate its accuracy. So we have a model that is around 70% accurate. Now if I print out the classification report as well, for different classes, this is the overall F1 score, precision recall split that is there and here is our accuracy number that we've just seen as well, right? Now. How do I improve this? There are multiple approaches like grid search wherein you kind of sweep through multiple hyperparameters and reach at the optimum value. 
बट एवरी ट्री ऑन एन एवरेज इफ यू सीन विल टेक अराउंड टू मिनट्स विच इज अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू स्पेंड राइट सो दिस इज द एग्जाम्पल दैट आई वॉज मैंशनिंग राइट सो हियर यू विल हैव ऑल द हाइपर पैरामीटर ग्रेड एंड हियर यू विल कैंड ऑफ कंबाइन डिफरेंट कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ऑल द हाइपर पैरामीटर्स टू रीच एट द ऑप्टिम वैल्यू दैट गिवज यू द बेस्ट मॉडल फिट फॉर योर यूज केस बट एवरी रैंडम फॉरेस्ट मॉडल बाई डिफॉल्ट विल टेक at least 2 minutes or for bigger models with bigger max depth more n estimators will kind of take more time let me show you the magic of qml dot axel okay all you have to do right now is run this particular command load underscore extension qml dot axel so i'll quickly run this so all the accelerators have been installed so that is accelerators for sk learn u map and hdb scan okay now the only thing that i have to do is i have loaded the accelerators now without changing any line of code i'll show you the magic so i import random forest classifier from sk learn dot ensemble and the previous execution took 2 minutes this execution took 4 seconds again i am not modifying the speed of the video whatever you seeing on the screen is reality this is the power of qml acceleration on a gpu now what was the accuracy the accuracy will again be in line to what we've just mentioned which is 71% 70% depending on which features were trained on but again this was the exact example in the previous example it took around 2 minutes and 11 seconds here it's 4.77 seconds let me now push this even further so far the max depth was capped at 5 which is where i was not allowing the trees the individual trees to grow beyond a certain threshold now let me set the max underscore depth to 30 and let us see what magic it creates in 17 seconds the entire execution has happened i was able to fit this entire random forest classifier this is the accuracy so from 70% the accuracy has jumped to 96% by increasing the max depth and how much time have i invested 17 seconds to reach at max depth equal to 30 if i were to execute the same piece of code in the previous set of execution which took around 2 minutes and 11 seconds for this particular max depth this entire execution would have taken more than 4 to 5 minutes easily so there is a very famous algorithm in clustering called as hdb scan i import that i have matplotlib to show me the clusters the next function that i import is make underscore blobs to create a synthetic data set I also import sellout score from sklearn dot matrix. Now this is an extremely crucial matrix in case of a clustering algorithm. It's a matrix used to evaluate the quality of clustering by measuring the similarity of a data point to its own cluster compared to the other clusters. The values range generally between minus one to one, with higher values indicating better cluster formation. Now here I define n equal to twenty thousand, k equal to hundred. So I'll have hundred features, twenty thousand samples, and I create a data set. I forgot to import this, so now all the imports are in place, and this is how my overall data set is. So there are five clear clusters that I can see: one, two, three, four, five. Now I call the HDB scan function from HDB scan and save it into a variable called as clusterer. and i kind of fit all my x values which is these values into this clusterer object okay let's monitor the time it takes to create clusters and the quality of cluster it creates is something that we'll validate through the matrix that we've defined okay so for 20000 samples with 100 features in this particular data set it took around 48 seconds to create clusters the overall score that you see with respect to how well the clusters were formed is something that we'll see here which is around 0.73 so a value closer to 1 is what is desired so this itself is doing a good job 
सो आई शोड यू मैजिक फॉर क्लासिफिकेशन इन द प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल नाउ यू विल विटनेस मैजिक फॉर क्लस्टरिंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल सो आई गो अहेड एंड लोड द एक्सटेंशन so the extension is again loaded i kind of restarted the session just for everyone's information so that i could show you the acceleration in place so now i again go ahead and import hdb scan and now i fit this entire data again and it takes 799 milliseconds can you imagine the difference of speed up that you're seeing right now one execution takes 48 seconds this takes less than a second so this is 0.8 second to be precise amazing isn't it now again if you want to validate how good the performance is then this gives you a score of 0.735 it's the exact same score that you see here so there is literally no change in output performance and the acceleration is something that has gone above the roof this acceleration that you see here is beyond 50 to 100 times and this is on a smaller gpu and a smaller data set imagine the speed up that you will start getting once you use a bigger data set and a bigger gpu for your execution so this is a big game changer for everyone who are into ml model creations your entire workflow can be now accelerated to 50 to 100 times in terms of creating ml models without even changing a single line of code this is the power of qml acceleration and this is what i wanted to show you today i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching this video